With the theoretical billions of ways to build a Path of Exile character, it's no wonder it's difficult to understand how to make a functional build. However, I believe it can be broken down into bite-sized chunks. It's time to finally explore, from the ground up, build-making basics. Welcome, it's your friendly neighborhood Badger here, and it's time to dive headfirst into a widely requested series, exploring just what goes into making a build in Path of Exile. Now, I'm not gonna dress it up, build making in Path of Exile is hard. Hell, I even get it wrong all the time. We've just been a, uh, oh my goodness. This build is too squishy. But today, we'll be starting from what is initially the most overwhelming part of Path of Exile, the passive skill tree. You gained a skill point when you leveled up. Press P to use your skill point. Okay. Oh, sweet Jesus. Opening up this behemoth of customization still leaves me gobsmacked at the possibilities. It's no easy task deciphering the spider web of information, but with a little help from Professor Badger, we might just be able to. Just before we start though, if you don't already know what Path of Building is, download it right now. It's a community-driven build planner for Path of Exile and the link is in the description below. I'll be utilizing it throughout the series and you should be too if you want to up your build making game. Now, the tree itself is all encompassing in terms of build making, but we won't be diving into every single specific, like different damage types, defense types, cluster duels, etc. Those topics will be discussed in future episodes, but we will be looking at how to understand, navigate, and perfect your skill tree for any build you are making. This episode is intended to be pretty basic, but I'm sure everyone watching will learn at least something. So, stick through. The skill tree is broken up into seven separate starting positions, all corresponding to an individual class. Starting from the middle and then going clockwise, we have Scion, Witch, Shadow, Ranger, Duelist, Marauder, and Templar. Not only this, but there are also distinct areas on the tree for basic attribute types. Intelligence is mainly focused at the top with the Witch, Dexterity is focused around the Ranger area, and Strength is focused around our big Marauder bud. Templar, Shadow, and Duelist dip into two areas each, as a kind of mix of certain types, but don't let this fool you at all. The great thing about the skill tree is any class can travel anywhere. You can have a spellcasting Marauder who needs a lot of intelligence reaching up here, or a Witch who prefers to wield a giant sword and would rather explore down here. Each class can branch out from two starting positions. Well, except the Scion, they get a whopping six choices. So what is stopping you from playing any class with any type of build? One thing to consider is skill tree travel distance. On building a character, one of the first things to consider is what type of build you want to play and the ascendancy you want to play it with. Some things are very straightforward, like an axe-wielding champion or a fireball-slinging elementalist, but that doesn't stop you from branching out and traveling across the tree to make your build come true. Just be aware this comes at a cost of travel. Subsequently, the best way to treat the skill tree is like a journey to the supermarket. You best go in with a plan of what you want, otherwise you'll be wandering back and forth between the aisles picking up anything that grabs your fancy. Each of these notables you see with the golden borders are the items from the shelves, and the small nodes between them are the steps it takes to move between the aisles. You don't really want to be traveling from the frozen food section to the deli and then back to get a pack of sweets from the confectionery aisle. Maximizing your value while walking through is what turns an average passive tree into a great one. Let's take an example here. Say you are a marauder who is life-based and uses a shield and an ax, uses war cries, and wants to take the node Resolute Technique, meaning that you cannot deal critical hits, but you can never miss. In Path of Building, selecting this node from the starting point gives you the quickest way through the tree possible, and thus leaving you with something like this. Sometimes, this is quite accurate. However, is there a much more efficient way to get there? Definitely. These travel points are doing close to nothing for the build itself. Now, the search bar down here is extremely helpful, so use it. What did we say? Life-based? Let's search life. Great, we have some good nodes coming out of the starting point at the bottom. Shields? Well, here are some good nodes through here and they even have elemental resistance. Perfect. And we can even go through some more life right here. We are using axes, so these nodes could be great for your damage. We said war cries? These nodes look great. Thus leaving us very close to resolute technique itself. 
The difference in points used might be quite a bit, but the value we have received out of traveling through all of these nodes, potentially taking a detour, have given us much more power than before. The last good thing to do would be to go back along the travel area and look at any notable points that are close, like for example, Heart of the Warrior or Barbarism for more life, and pick up those too. And remember, keep using the search bar. It is the best thing you can utilize. Scattered throughout the passive skill tree are jewel sockets. These seemingly empty nodes can hold some of the greatest power in the game if utilized correctly. There are multiple types of jewels that can fit here, craftable magic and rare jewels, unique jewels, and abyss jewels as well. In a future jewel episode, I will dive deep into these, but it's important to note that these sockets are very much worth picking up if they are only a couple of points away. Some great stats on jewels you may find in the wild are increased life or energy shield, depending on what type of build you're playing, attack or cast speed, elemental resistances, and a lot more. Keystones are the powerhouse passive skill points in the Path of Exile world. Think of them as providing immense power at the cost of some sort of drawback. Almost all keystones on the tree, the big ones here, provide a big upside as well as a downside. One of the awesome things about Path of Exile is trying to figure out how to maximize a keystone upside and minimize the downside. Take this very popular keystone, Acrobatics. Acrobatics gives you a big percentage chance to dodge attack hits, yet gives large penalties to armor, energy shield, and block chance. Taking this on a build that might be a hybrid evasion and armor, or has a decent amount of block, might not be the best idea, but deciding to completely stack into evasion and dodge means that there's no downside in taking this node. As a little exercise, scour the tree and see if you can figure out how to maximize upsides and minimize downsides on some keystones. Often, keystones are build enabling, especially something like Chaos Inoculation. This enables a whole archetype of builds commonly referred to as CI, builds that stack only energy shield. This actually means that your life total becoming one doesn't matter at all, and you also get the upside of being completely immune to Chaos damage. In total, a build can theoretically utilize 123 passive points, and if you're playing Scion, that can extend all the way to 128. However, it's a very bad idea to plan all the way to these numbers as an end goal. Honestly, you want your build to be finished by around level 80 to 85, which is around 100 to 105 points. In Path of Building, you can easily check this up the top, so by this point, making sure that you have a good balance of defense and offense, whatever that may be, whether it's energy shield or life, elemental or physical damage, make sure things look balanced by this point. Honestly, a great way to go about it is to take one defense notable, then one offense notable, then the defense, then an offense, etc., all the way to your finished tree. This isn't a hard and fast rule, you'll hear me say that a lot throughout the series, but it really does help you feel balanced throughout the leveling process. After this point, you can treat each level up and point as an extra bonus. Once again, go back through the tree and see if there are any short branches off the side that you can accommodate into the build. There really is a lot in Path of Building that helps with build creation, but you've got to know where to look. First of all, hovering over any node on the tree at all will give you a breakdown of how much it is giving you, both in offense and defense. You can easily hover over, say for example, a wheel with a notable, and it will tell you the stats of the node itself, as well as everything to travel to that node. Here's my little tip. If you're looking for damage, try to take wheels that have at least 3.5% damage per point. Anything below that probably isn't too worth it for the points spent. Once again, this is not a hard and fast rule. You can also use this tick box down here, show node power, to get an indication of some nodes you might want to try to go for. Beware, however, that the build creation is not all just about numbers. Don't use this as a defining factor for every choice you make about your build. You can also swap what the node power shows with the drop down box here. It defaults to a balance of offense and defense, but definitely take a browse through. There's a ton to explore, for example, damage over time, and some others. Lastly, making different trees and saving them via the drop down here is a great way of comparing different ideas or setups for builds. You can flick back and forth between the trees to see changes in DPS, defenses, and many other things. Utilize this if you're unsure what pathing might be the better option. 
There are some passive skill tree jewels in the game that can augment your experience navigating the passive skill tree. Some of these can get expensive if you're playing in a trade league or relatively rare if you're in solo self found, but regardless, it is worth exploring a couple of the most influential ones to finish off this video. Let's start with Thread of Hope. This jewel is a Cirrus exclusive drop, one of the endgame bosses in Path of Exile, and augments your tree by providing a ring of allocatable nodes outside that of which you could usually allocate. Ergo, you can pick specific points without having to travel to them. The jewel itself sockets into any of these empty jewel sockets in the tree, granting the ability to select certain passives. The jewel itself comes in many variations from a small ring to a very large ring. It does come with a downside as well, giving you a negative value to your elemental resistances ranging from negative 10 to negative 20%. There are some very amazing places this jewel can be used for so many different builds. You can very easily go into Path of Building yourself, create a jewel in the gear section, select any of the variations from the drop down and put it in jewel sockets to see what you come up with. My favorite is this one right here for physical trap builds. A reminder, this jewel can be re-rolled with divine orbs to change both the role of the elemental resistances and the type of ring itself. Next, we have Intuitive Leap. It functions similarly to Thread of Hope, but just creates a very small circle near the jewel socket itself in which you can allocate any passive skill point without it needing to be connected to the rest of your tree. This is great in any slot near charges if your build takes them, but it does also have many uses. Here's a popular one to pick up an amazing reduced reservation node, Charisma. There are some other great jewels like Timeless Jewels, Unnatural Instinct, and much more, but I'll cover these in future videos. Otherwise, we're gonna be here all day. Once again, this video has been an introduction to my Build Making Basics series, and though quite elementary, it serves as a base for the videos to come. Let me know what you'd like to see next out of the series in the comments below. And remember, hit that sub button and make sure notifications are turned on to be notified of all the future episodes coming on their way. I hope you learned a small something, and I'll see you next time. Badger, out.